Bay 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 Welcome everyone, this is Abel Ozen. Joining me as always are my co-hosts uh, and co-conspirator CJ. Uh, I'm esteemed. I'm the only esteemed co-host. Esteemed co-host and then yeah. just... And then just co-host. I'm CJ. Barker? I gotta come back to the show, so I guess I didn't fuck up too bad last time. So. <laughs> no, so officially now, I feel like this works better as a threesome, whether it's... Uh, CJ Andres and I or CJ Barker and I well it's really gonna go crazy if there's four of us so we'll, we'll get there when we cross that bridge but uh, this is the Normal World Order Podcast where and we're then we're gonna to... hire a clown to just dance around that's <laughs> gonna be awesome stripper clown to take over the world by spreading weekly pop culture news from across different genres which include movies, comics, TV shows or anything that we consider nerd we're the Normal World Order Podcast your greatest in since 2017 that little stripper nugget is was left there just specifically for Jasmine to see if she actually listens to the show or not <laughs> so if, if she hears that then we'll I just... did that the, remember when I uh, said uh, I'm tired of people naming the kids Josh yeah that was specifically for a guy I work with named Josh <laughs> he told me he listens so we'll find out alright we'll see we'll whenever see. you catch up <laughs> Uh, okay, but yeah, no, we're, we're... This is a pretty gross threesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hey, wait, part. you did cut your beard. I did cut my beard. Holy shit. Yeah. That was the first time I'd seen you forever, and then it's like the full beard, and then now it's gone. Yeah, we've been together for like 20 minutes now, <laughs> it just took that long. Wait, to be fair, on the trip up here, you were in the backseat. No, I was in the backseat. And it was a great beard. It's a shame. You're yeah, you did have a really you're, good... Uh, yeah. You're right to... Yeah. You're right right to, to roll that. I was freezing in the back. You guys are all up there. All no, I was freezing too. I'm all like, talking. I'm like, yeah. You let's just... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just what did you guys tell me this? I just didn't want to be a dick and be like, hey, CJ, can you please roll up your window? I'm fucking freezing. <laughs> I didn't know that. You guys told me. Because all... He... I have basically had the same hoodie he does, like a very thin one, and you have your big, thick-ass oh, work jacket, and you're like... Fucking polar bear up here. I never free, get cold anyway. Fucking That's free right. right over here with this elbow, and I'm like, dude, it's like 40 degrees out. I'm freezing. I'm really sorry. I did not realize that. You uh, say something. <laughs> I couldn't. It's so loud back there. Your mouth was. I just heard. Shut. I heard your guys' voices, but not the conversation. So I just laugh every I'm, so often. Just. I wonder why after a while Barker didn't say anything. He focused in the back like. Well, I'm trying to make sure I don't get wow. hypothermia in the back. Is CJ a Dick? Full question. <laughs> Very important. Full question on that one. That should come back 100%. 100%. Yeah, it, it will. <laughs> All right, you guys keep filling air while I bring up the full question. I am definitely a polar bear. I'm the most, <laughs> I'm the closest thing to a polar bear that you know. So hopefully you're going to die off soon here then, huh? Probably. Oh, yeah, we, we got to talk about the... Uh, the we're going to start raiding through trash cans. We got to talk about the great news that's happening. I'm not going to get skinny, though, like those other fucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not going to happen. What's the great news? Uh, CJ's moving back in, so... Oh, yeah, that is got, pretty... Got is two it, out of three. This so is great news. So you guys can talk... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can talk shop, talk some, talk some No stuff. more that all my like my candy on my coffee table is gonna be destroyed. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He just goes to your candy. Or he, oh, he did that last night. He's just like, yep, yeah, let's just uh, eat this. And, you know, What's this right here? Oh yeah, that's gone. So you're as bad as a polar bear, just fucking scavenging. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's all polar bear. He's warm and, and he just eats everything in his path. That's yeah, pretty much. No, nothing you say is inaccurate. It is incredibly white. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very white. I love the other day. So, like I said, I'm the human closest to the polar bear that you know. Everyone just mistakes him for Seth Rogen now. And it's like you look like that one guy. That happens all the time. So that's funny when Jasmine dropped me off at his place or dropped me off at his place. I was like that Seth Rogen looking motherfucker because you just see him digging in his tr- in his car from digging the trash out. It was funny. Uh, anyway, poll question: Is CJ's car destroyed? That's not destroyed. Oh, See, well, I'm speaking relatively. It's, I mean, it's it been, drives. It's, it's it, been, dri- yeah. it drives, but I mean, like, there's so much garbage in it. It's been way worse than yeah. that. It's been worse. That was yeah. nothing. Where, like, you have to, like, your knees are to, like, your chin <laughs> with all the trash at the bottom. <laughs> it's fine. We're not gonna, we're not gonna car shame CJ on the I, show. Already. Okay. All right. all right. No car shame. I can take it. Alrighty, it, it was my turn. Barker did it, did us a great service last week and brought us that really good beer. It was really good. So I decided to go to the liquor store on Kansas, the one right next to my mother in law's office. Discount. The one, discount where they have some. They have, I feel like better that's variety. That's probably the best. You're the, uh, beer, you're the beer guy as far as like specific different kinds of beer. Do you think that's they have the best selection? Oh, there? definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I went. There. I mean, a lot of other places are focus, trying, they, but they focus on like microbrews. Yeah, I mean, like they had the the microbrew room, you know, and you could build your own six packs. So. Yeah, that, by far, Discount Liquor. Shout out to Discount for uh, being in the 21st century. And outsmarting Abel. <laughs> yeah, no shit, you see that? <laughs> I felt like one of those seals that get their shit stuck in, like, the... <laughs> oh, like the 60 you're, you're the seagull that, like, with the beak and the... the... <laughs> 
Who knows? All right, so it was my turn to get us a beer. I think we've had this before, but since we were starting over again, I really like these, so I grabbed them. And since Barker's a beer guy, I want him to let him know if I'm actually drinking okay beer or if I'm just like you liking it. Uh, have we had that? I think so. It's called El, El Gose, I think. Oh, yeah, it? we did. Yeah. It's a German-style sour ale, uh, 4.5%. It has the skull candy on it. And it's supposed to be brewed with, with Rocky Mountain water, malted barley, malted wheat, lime, sea salt, hop, hops. And yeast, so here you go. And I brought two six packs, so if you guys want more, let me know. I heard they recently added more hops. Uh, from the Avery uh, Brewery. Where's uh, that? Uh, Colorado. Um, they do a lot of great beers. And uh, Agosa, I have not had, so let's try this out real quick. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm ruining everything. Yeah, you are. Oh, shit, that's good. That is really good. Cool. All right, I think we did one. God dang. Mm. I, think I, like, I think I like sour beers. Like, that's pretty cool. They're, they're on the rise lately, you know. Really? Sour beers and ghosts. So. How do you make sour beer? Just the hops, different hops? Oh, or? God, I, I think you just, could not tell you. Don't you have, just have a little person pee in it? <laughs> <laughs> is that what is that, is that you do? Sure, why not? I mean, you, you sounded, you, you had a lot of confidence behind that, so uh, I'm going to go with that, yeah. 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 All right, that is as good as any to as good as any transition to move over to the poll questions. Uh, the question of the show last week was, uh, we didn't actually say it out loud, which kind of sucks, but I will this time, I won't forget, remind me, but what do you think of Titans? The poll on Facebook said, uh, 100% said yes, zero for, uh, for great and good, 0% said meh, so I think that's pretty good. Nice. Good job, guys. Yeah. And on Twitter... Is a, is a yeah, that's the Twitter audience is a little more um, what would you say refined? No, less refined. <laughs> Facebook's probably a little more forgiving on stuff. Twitter was made just to uh, just just to troll things. Troll, yes, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> on Titans, twenty percent said good, forty percent said or twenty percent said great, forty percent said mm-hmm. good. 20% said meh, and 20% uh-huh. said bad. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And we do have a bigger sample size on Twitter. Typical Twitter. So. Yeah, come on, Twitter. Twitter's no, Twitter's divided. awesome, though. Twitter's okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but... It's always divided. It's always uh, just people talking shit. Like, yeah, yeah if, you get, if you put the same poll, it's more likely to be divided on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> absolutely. Somebody will always find something to bitch on Twitter, so... It's more yeah. like 20% great, 20% good, 85% go fuck your mom. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Twitter. Yeah. All right, now we're going to do the rest of the poll questions. Which I prefer Twitter, by the way. Let me make that very clear. Yeah, I, I like Twitter's entertainment better. Are we going to fill Carrie Nature with our penis? 67% said yes. Yeah. Is Mother Nature going to fill us with her snow penis? 100% said yes. Yeah. Is our butthole worse than Lisa Ann's? <laughs> 55% said yes. Do you know what that means? 67% said no. Does he make beer in his meth lab? 100% said yes. <laughs> oh. Is Breaking Bad overrated? 75% said yes. Oh, win Ooh. for me. Is he that guy? Zeus? 67% said yes. <laughs> Should Barker shut up? 67% said yes. By the way, that was CJ. Yeah. <laughs> that was all CJ. <laughs> I had a feeling. Yeah. Are we pussies for getting pounded? 75% said yes. <laughs> Did that smart really good? 80- 100% said yes. Is it Melty Man? Sixty-seven <laughs> percent said yes. Nice, Melty Man. Was it Beef and Cheddar Man? One hundred percent said yes. One hundred percent on that. Is it better than Alan One Dick? Sixty-seven percent said yes. So, <laughs> if you guys want to vote in our vote in our polls, if you guys want to get in our polls, always go on Twitter at NerdWorldOrder One, and you guys can vote in our polls. S- let's see. I don't think Whitney's actually seen the the movie for this week, so he was. Hey, no, he did. I don't think that yet. Because we haven't gotten any... Oh, he commented on a bunch of other stuff, as well, he usually does. But oh, I, I, I saw on his Facebook that he was rallying people to go. But. Yeah, Sunday at like 7.30. It's Sunday, 2 o'clock. Oh, Sunday. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. My bad. So, we did that quantum sorry, leap, you know, of that hour, so... Yeah. Why. My bad. We're in the... When people listen to this, we'll be in the past? Future? Future. Yeah. See, so... <clears throat> oh, man. My brain hurts. <laughs> Uh, we should get some lottery tickets. So we got a special guest <laughs> on the show. Isis is always Luna. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, where was I? We do have a segment called uh, Hashtag Shit when he says who is uh, very kindly, very very he's thankful d- for his input, I he's guess. He's probably 
the second closest thing to a polar bear that you know. When you probably yeah, you're right. You're probably right. Yeah, big tall white guy probably never gets cold. <laughs> yeah. And but he always gives us his two cents of, uh, two cents on what he's thinking on the show and just life in general. Does Whitney uh, ever get cold? Poor question. question. So, oh my God, Abel is a beer newbie. Look, I was my beer knowledge or whatever you want to do is if there's a can, I'm drinking it. Yeah. And that's all. I don't need to know what it is. If it tastes good, and I'm gonna drink it. That's all I need to know. Owls are smart, but corvids are way smarter. They are tool users. I'm assuming corvids are ravens and crows. What is? But what does JJ Watt have to do with it? I don't. Know. I'm very confused. Tools. I got you. <laughs> that went. Did, did that go over your head? Totally did. did. Fat assophilia, love of fat asses. Phobia means fear. Philia means love or attraction. Oh, okay. I knew that actually. I love Ron Perlman, but he is getting up there in years. Yeah. Bright is fucking awesome. I like Bright. Fuck Bright. You got, your <clears throat> guest is poning you guys on nerd and beer knowledge. Beer knowledge, yes. It's just because he knows Brendan Thwaites last name or whatever. <laughs> yeah, this shit. I don't know. He, uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes. I, as I was editing this show, I have to know, how did you know that? Like, did you, like, go behind the scenes? There was a movie he did. Uh, fuck. Oculus? Uh, it was it was a movie that I watched oh, and really? yeah and so I was just like this is a really good movie okay. so I looked it up and like uh, the the Wikipedia you know mm-hmm. just says Thwaites oh. okay so apropos of that uh, last night it, Dustin told me that the producer behind Marvel is Kevin Feige so don't feel too bad it's obviously Kevin Feige and <laughs> Dustin's a crazy person. So. It, was that his hot take there, or the no? Other? It's okay. way it's no, way no. worse than that. Yeah, okay. we're not going down. Is that, that just like the tip of the iceberg? Okay, okay. Right. Save it for later. It's good content. Buckle up, muchacho, because you might get your <laughs> brain blown. Um, and that was it for Whitney. So Whitney, whatever you feel about Captain Marvel, just add it to the next show. Yeah, and we'll go from there. So that was the shortest hashtag shit Whitney says out. Thank you, Whitney. Whitney, with not a lot to say, are you are you stunned by that? Full question. I'm pretty stunned. Let's see. All right. As always, we do always remember Andres. Uh, he was a former co-host. and still co-host whenever he's in town and he wants to do this show, which is very rarely now. But we do try to honor him in the best way we can, and that is bringing up his favorite topic, anime. Which, uh, have we ever filled in Barker on the inside joke? Probably not. No. He's such an anime hater. Like, all the time he's like, oh, that's such, like, we're nerds, but that shit is like nerd, nerd shit. <laughs> so every week we have the Andres Loza Memorial Anime Minute. to me- But here's the thing, though. Every time we brought up an anime, he's seen Oh, it. yeah, absolutely. I like- forgot the best part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. He's like, oh, I've seen that. And I'm like, you're, then why do you hate anime? He's like, oh, I just don't like it. But it's like, anytime we make any news about anime, it always like, Oh, no, I've seen that. And we've that. never seen Yeah, we've never seen anime. Yeah. And we're more open-minded to anime. So, so he purposely looks for it and then just he, he's rags a, on it. He's a, self, he's a self-hate anime nerd. Like, <laughs> he, how we've described it before is the congressman who, like, rallies against gays but goes to the bathroom and tries to have gets gay that, sex. Gets yeah. that blowjob. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's Andres. <laughs> so, uh, on the Andres Loza Memorial Anime Minute this week, Kadowaka will be bringing together four of their biggest light novel properties turned anime franchises into one cute series, reimagining each of the series' characters in a surprising way. But when but when will the series actually air? Luckily, is- Isekai Quartet has officially been confirmed to premiere April 9th in Japan. So there you go. Wow. Nice. Well, give us your hot take, yeah. Andres. Andres, let us know. So, Hey, CJ. Yeah. Do you love the NWO? Yeah. Do you like supporting things you love by giving them an amount of money so small that you wouldn't notice or feel leaving your bank account? Yeah. Then you'd be perfect to donate to the NWO cause, which will help us create more content and become a better podcast. Is that something you like to do? Yeah. Then visit us on patreon.com slash order and give us a monthly donation to help us out. Or if you want, give us a one-time donation. Please go to our PayPal at nerdworldorder2 at gmail.com. Yeah? Yeah. And remember, folks, obey the NWO. Yeah. All right. This week in Nerd, uh, we're just going to run by these and let me know what you guys think. Um, I feel like that works a little bit better when I just kind of give you guys news instead of trying to break it down. Yeah. Did you guys see the official trailer? Have you ever caught up on Game of Thrones? I don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> you know what? I, <laughs> I can't talk too much shit because I used to be that guy. Do you go out of your way not to watch it or just you've never seen just it? Just never seen it. Yeah, that's how I was. But so. you will watch it. No. See, now he's going out of his way yeah, not to okay. watch it. Yeah, okay. Anyways, so this should we is, shame Dustin into oblivion? Shame, shame, shame. Oh, shame. That's perfect. <laughs> shame. 
Okay, so Barker, this is, you're gonna have to sit this one out. Did you see the trailer for season eight? Nope. Uh. <laughs> no, I don't want to though. It'll spoil. You know my stance on trailers. Yeah, you're right. Generally. It's pretty good. We see. Uh, we see the first new f- new footage for season eight. Nothing is really given up. We see some dragons. We see Arya running from something. Um, we get to see the battle. Of the... Which she will eventually turn around and murder. Probably. Mm-hmm. You're right. And then we see glimpses of the Battle of Winterfell, which from every report I've heard is supposed to be the biggest battle ever. In a series filmed. full of big battles? That's crazy. No. No. Bigger than that. Bigger than the, the Lord of the Rings final battle in the, the Two Towers. Like the wow. biggest, biggest thing ever recorded, ever done. On, that's insane yeah. so they're going like full yeah, full, out two, two full, towers is crazy yeah so they're wow. going bigger than that wow so that's cool that's worthy of the show though yeah, yeah. Like, so one of those episodes is going 80 minutes is probably just a battle one. yeah so that's badass that is badass dude you really should yeah I'm not kidding watch Game of Thrones I'm, and not just because I'm like look when people got on my case for not watching Game of Thrones like I hated that I'm like I'll watch it when I watch it the only thing I'll say and I'll never bring it up again is you're kind of doing yourself a disservice by not watching it I guarantee okay. you, you'll like. It. I, I I give you that. Like, uh, I was, he has the seasons. I was the same way too. Like, I just hate it. Everybody, I have you know, HBO now. Like those people are just like, oh, you need to watch a uh, Broken Mirror, and then, like nobody talks about it. Okay, it's like, did I really have to watch it? I, I know Game of Thrones okay. is like the biggest thing I, I, yeah. in television. That's the difference. Right now. I agree with you. That is annoying. This is in a class of its own. No, and, and I get you. And I'm, I'm not purposely not trying to watch it. It's just. No, you are because I tried to make you watch it and you wouldn't and you refused. Yeah, and I was tired <laughs> for like he was doesn't tired for eight months while I tried to get him to watch Look, this man, fucking thing. The series Pole starts question. in about a month. That's enough time. Yeah, you can do it to watch it. All right. And by the time, but when he does, he's gonna go, dude, give it to him. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I don't know. I'm kind of like interested of just watching that episode of the that battle that you're talking about. That but sounds. I think, but. You need context. You do yeah, need context. Okay. Yeah. yeah, true. All so right. we that, will get this. We'll, we'll get this ball rolling. That's, that's yeah. the last thing I'll say on my friend is like I. We, we big... have the, we have the very we have very similar tastes. They're almost aligned as far as like uh, genre stuff, like TV stuff, movies, comics stuff. You will you you won't be disappointed. You, you won't get I you won't get into it, and it's like man, like what this is a drag. Like from the get go. It's like yeah, yeah. Dude, the first episode. Yeah, fucking yeah. yeah. Reels it, you it's in. good, dude. It's I think good. I think like the one time like I, I hated the most was uh my my friend Joey. He's like, you gotta watch Black Sails. Black Sails is amazing. I Black like, Sails is not game of Yeah, no, but like I I started watching it, you know, and I was like, yeah, man, this Black Sails is all right. It's not great. He's like, oh, I don't watch that anymore. We're, we're watching this. I'm like. So we're just jumping like series. Of, I I can't that would I, be I can't keep up with that. Yeah, that, I hate that it. would be annoying. That's when I was just like, all right, I'm done. You know. Well, and then like I have a I legit have a list of TV shows I have to watch because we're in the golden age of television, mm-hmm. and G- Game of Thrones and you can make the argument for a couple other things are the standard of the golden age of television and definitely. Uh, yeah, I would say I think most people would agree. Game of Thrones is the best. show Oh yeah, Game ever of Thrones made. is definitely number one on TV right now. But it's the best show ever made. I, th- I think. I think a lot of people agree with me, probably. It, it's good. It's that, and like I said, that that that'll be the end of that for me. Hold I up. I looked up. Uh, I I did a thing. I looked up. I think it was like highest grossing or highest rated or something. The only thing that beat it consistently, and it didn't beat it all the time, but was Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers is good. I've never seen it. It's good. It's really uh, good. It's that, World War Two. That was the only thing that was ever above it. Is if it wasn't Band of Brothers, it was Game of Thrones. Oh. So. So, and also, I'll watch Band of Brothers. It made me want to watch Band of Brothers. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It was, it's Tom Hanks produced. It was a little bit after Saving Private Ryan, so it was like right in that World War II right kind on. of... That's cool. I love World War II, yeah. so, well, you know. Th- there was another one that uh, that they produced after that. It was called uh, The Pacific, because Band of Brothers takes place in Europe, and The Pacific is what it sounds like in in, um, in the islands and stuff, but the Battle of Midway and stuff like that. So, um, that one is good, but not as good as Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers right. is really good. But yeah, that's what that... It made me want to watch Band of Brothers, but... The, it was one and two consistently. So as far as like best show ever, so Game of Thrones is right there. Um, but you can't go off of sorry to cut you off. No, you're, you're next. Yeah. But you can't go off of ratings as far as best show goes because you know what's the best network rated television show? Keith the Card- or Kardashian. No, 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 no. As far as sitcoms and stuff. And oh, uh, shows, oh yeah. The yeah. Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And that, sh- you, that show's you, terrible. Yeah, it's not very good. Yeah. So, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, side note, uh, since we're talking about Tom Hanks, I figured this out the other day. Like, you know, Robot Chicken? Yes. Whenever they do, like, a skit with Tom Hanks, they purposely uh, get Colin Hanks to come in and do it, <laughs> which I think is fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, they do hilarious. they do it all the time. Like, really? nobody else does Tom Hanks except Colin, except Colin Hanks. That's so. I didn't realize that. That's yeah. cool. 
It's so awesome. It's cool the people that they get to do uh, Robot Chicken. Like Elizabeth Olsen does it all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, Donald Faison does it from Scrubs. Like yeah, it's, yeah. They it's cool. They bring in a lot of like people, yeah. which I think is awesome. I, I think mean. so too. Alrighty, so we're gonna moving on. <coughs> I know uh, there's only one CW show that I watch, and that's Flash. Do you watch any other CW shows? No, um, I've been watching a couple episodes of Flash. I can't really get into Legends of Tomorrow. Legends of Tomorrow is kind of out there. It's super cheesy, uh, yeah. and I get that. So we're just going to grace over that real quick. The one that started all of it was Arrow, and they announced it after season eight. It's They're done with they're Arrow, done. so we're moving on from there. Uh, is, is it going to like f- finish, though? You know, like or... Yeah, they said it, they're done. Stephen Amell is moving on to other things. But so. they're, they're gonna, it's going to end like... Well, what they're saying is, so every year, ever since they brought over Supergirl, like, two years ago they do a huge crossover every year they do Supergirl Legends of Tomorrow not this year uh, they didn't do Legends of Tomorrow but usually it's Legends of Tomorrow Supergirl Flash Arrow and they do a, a, an episode per series so it's like a four episode crossover and it's a huge story two years ago when they did everybody they went they fought against Planet X which is just a planet full of Nazis mm-hmm. which is dope this last year they did uh, which storyline it, it's very very it's loosely based from the comic books. This year they did, um, which, what did they do? Um, shit. I forget what it's called, but basically they, they, they had to fight against the anti-monitor. And then next year what they're saying they're going to do is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm. So they're saying that they're going to end it because Arrow, in the comics, uh, Fl- uh, uh, Barry Allen Flash died and then so did Supergirl died in Crisis on wow. Infinite Earths. So what they're saying is instead of killing off Supergirl or Flash, they're going to kill off uh, Arrow. Oh. So that's the rumor. That's why they're going to okay. cancel it after. I heard that they uh, casted uh, with Supergirl uh, Lex Luthor. They did. Um, I the can't... dude from Two and a Half Men. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forget his name, but yeah. Not, not Charlie Sheen the or, or Ashton Kutcher, but yeah. the other guy. Yeah. Less yeah. AIDS. Less AIDS. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I got a text. I'm sorry. You just missed gold. <laughs> I'll put that down. I'm sorry. No, he, we were talking about in Supergirl they cast Lex Luthor mm-hmm. and uh, we could we can't remember his name and we're like oh the guy from Two and a Half Men and he's like yeah not Charlie Sheen and I'm like yeah the other guy <laughs> less AIDS with less AIDS yeah. nice. <laughs> nice. all right so we're gonna move on from that so the, the short list for the Batman actors was released they they've since debunked it but there's they said there's truth behind this list Jack Rayner. 27 year old trans, uh, Transformers Age of Extinction Extinction uh, Age of Ex- Extinction there you go star anything that has to anything that has to do with that sounds like the the porn parody of the Transformers anything that has to do with Transformers you can get the hell out of here yeah (laughs) Alexander Ludwig the 26 year old Hunger Games actor have you did you watch the last Transformers movie no It was bad, dude. dude, That's why he's kind of like, oh, yeah, it was it was bad, dude. It's the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, except for Open World. Well, I'm not I'm not talking about like that. I'm talking about like the actor, you know. If he's if he's associated with if he's associated with it, fuck him. Not his fault. Fuck him. That guy. Wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Whatever his name is. Jack Rainer. Steve Harrelson. Pull question. Woody Harrelson's like twin brother. Alexander Ludwig, the 26-year-old Hunger Games actor. I don't remember him from the Hunger Games. And Jasmine dragged me to edge each... Like, I drag her to... Fuck that guy, pull question. I drag her to every comic book movie. She stopped since after Black Panther. She's like, I liked it, but you can go without me. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, but she dragged me to every Hunger, Hunger Games movie, so I remember all of those guys. Except for this one, I remember him. I guess I'll look it up right now. Uh, and you, you sent me this link. A- Aaron Taylor Johnson, the 29-year-old who played Quicksilver in Avengers Age of Ultron and Kick-Ass. I mean, I'm my, okay with that. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he seems like he can do a, an important role, you know, like Batman yeah. and everything like that. Uh, Nicholas Holt, the 29-year-old actor who, who plays who Beast uh, in X-Men mm, his first class. Uh, no. a- and then the actors all range be- in their... Late to early, late twenties, uh, and range anywhere between five eight and six three. So Army Hammer's probably out. No, he's no. not a Bruce Wayne to me. No, Ooh, that's well, not. you're on, you're on audio uh, media. Alexander Ludwig, we're we're looking at pictures of him right now. Uh, no, no, you can't, no. You can't have a blonde. Beard and then uh, who's the other guy? Jack Rayner. Yeah, Jack Rayner. Rayner. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Rayner, I barely know her. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this can't be right. It says uh, he's an Australian. Yep. Welcome to the podcast. Yep. That's uh, totally. How do you spell him, Rainer? Uh, R. Oh wait, R A. It's supposed to be R E. You guys are finding Batman right now. If it's not my guy, Matt Bomber, I'm out. He's already in the DC universe, bro. Yeah, it's already yeah, well, DC. It, I, what did I say yeah. when we first talked yeah. about it? If it ain't my guy, Matt Bomber, I'm out. 
Out of these guys, probably Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yeah, like, yeah definitely yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Kick-ass. Yeah. I'm, I'm still out. Really? Yeah. If it's not my guy, Matt Bomber, I'm out. You still watch it. Probably, but I'm out. <laughs> Pull cushion of the three. Yeah. They, oh, I think there's four. Oh, is there a fourth one? Yeah, four. Jack Rayner, no, just, Alexander no, just Ludwig, that. Jack O'Connell... Pull oh, qu- I forgot that one. Jack O'Connell, the 28-year-old star of Godless. No, pull question of the three, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay, sorry. that's yeah. it. All right. Um, the other guy just got fucked, you know. Like. Oh, I missed a question uh, or a, a thing. Did you guys, I know you didn't, but did you see the trailer for Brightburn? The I, yes, one? I did. You, you saw this one? I'm super stoked for Brightburn. Dude, yeah. how, ex- how, how it's cool gonna be awesome. are the ideas? Have you seen them? <laughs> no, uh, I have, but I literally Why would you assume this was last week, too, and you guys are like super like, Well, no, but they finally they released a trailer this time. Like, and it, it looks just, fucking It looks awesome. great. Yeah, like, it looks fucking I'm fantastic. I'm here for Brightburn. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, I'm down. Elizabeth Banks is in this, and also the, the guy that Pam left in the office for Jim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Roy. in this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, James Gunn is the producer of this, and I guess his brothers wrote the movie. Sean Gunn. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm here for Brightburn. Yeah. That is like second in command Dark Horse for me. After uh, Detective best movie. Pi- yeah, yeah, after Detective Pikachu. I, it might be. There might be tied. Yeah. What an what an original ass idea! Like it's obviously not Superman, but it's Superman. You yeah. know what I mean? So and he's got the the, ult- the quotes on yeah. it. Yeah. And I love that that look that they have, uh, where the guy just like or the kid just tackles people. I love how they do it in the movie. It looks good, man. His mask is creepy as yeah. hell. Yeah. Dude. And so it's this little symbol, like it's like a uh, two diamonds with like a line. Yeah, like dude, like I'm excited, man. If this is James Gunn, like James Gunn's rebound after that whole fiasco with, uh, with Guardians of the Galaxy. Everybody, yeah, he's yeah. exonerated yeah. after. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, definite. I mean, he was before, but okay. Marvel will bring him back. Like we're so sorry. <laughs> it's us. Uh, that's too late for Marvel. Yeah, he's moving we've been, on. We've talked about, I want him to do a Green Lantern. I think that'd be James perfect. Gunn? Yeah. yeah that would be dope. That would be I mean, so yeah, he, I mean, he's got the so I want him to So yeah. I want so. him to stay with DC, though. Marvel fucked it up. They, As far as James Gunn, nothing else. But but yeah, I, I think you're right. And we'll talk about it more in, into the main topic. Oh, hopefully I'm not stepping too far into the show. I don't know if you, you are. get this, but yeah, probably am. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I always, I'm I always do. No, look, but, look, man. Yeah. I make an outline, but honestly, like... Anything else is so, free games. So you heard about the whole uh, Suicide Squad uh, well, casting. I, that's what I said. I'm transition, <laughs> baby, transition. No, go ahead and start it. Go <laughs> uh, so, and if you guys want another one, I, uh, me, I'll know. take another. Uh, Suicide Squad 2 wants to recast Deadshot to be Idris, Idris Elba. Elba. Like, sexiest black guy And Deadshot can come shot right all over now, yeah. me, I'll tell you right uh, now. <laughs> 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 can Deadshot come shot all over me? Full question. I'm with that. Uh, Boss Logic, who likes to do a lot of uh, renderings and everything. Of, he like, did it already. He yeah. already did it, and yeah. He, Idris Elba as Deadshot, yeah. If knowing Idris Elba exists doesn't make you pissed off that Blake Shelton won Sexiest Man Alive. No shit! In a universe where all the Chris's exist, yeah, and, and, Idris Chris's, El- yeah. and Idris Elba exists, like, and they made him Sexiest Man in the World, some <sighs> asshole, like, yeah. Wait, they made Blake Shelton? Blake yeah. Shelton was named the sexiest man in the life. Now, God. God in, a, in a world with all the Chris's and Idris Elba, it's nonsense. And Ryan Gosling, like... Oh, yeah, no shit. It's ridiculous. Sorry, I'm tired of it. I spilled beer on me, so I have to... I, I guess it's just from him just being on, what what is it, The Voice? Probably. People yeah. love that show. Yeah, they do. It's just a... Kind no, of awful only show. your moms loves that show. And it's no. true because my mom Oh, hell yeah. Fucking... Bold I'm question. Sorry. Hell, pick it up. But uh, but yeah no uh, that was the a good transition by Barker because yeah that's exactly what I was gonna talk about next they are re- they are recasting um, Will Smith Will Smith uh, with Idris Elba which I'm excited for Oops. I think that that's that's good news I like that and the other thing I was gonna say is <laughs> coincidentally Idris Elba hosted SNL last night and I was watching a skit this morning. The the uh, improbable Hulk is the skit that I watch, and it's basically impossible, impossible Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when he gets mad, he turns into a white woman that just like argues her way out of everything. <laughs> so the skit starts off with Idris Elba going to the fifty percent like clearance rack, and he gets a shirt. He's like, "Ooh!" So he takes it to the thing, and the the clerk is like, "Oh, that'll be two hundred and some dollars." And he's like, "No, no, no! I got it from the fifty percent rack." And she's like, "Oh, well, it was no, no, no! It was only for that part of the store." He's like, no, that's where I got it. I got it from the rack back there. Oh, then somebody must have mistakenly got it. Okay, well, can I have my money back? Sorry, we only offer star, uh, star credit as policy. And then she's like, just give me my money. You won't like me when I'm angry. And then he like, transfer, uh, transforms into Cecily Strong. 
and she's like, stop grabbing me. And it, <laughs> this Keenan Thompson is a security guard. is like, man, we're not touching you. Stop harassing me. I'm going to call the police. And it's like, <laughs> okay, man, you can't have your money back. So it's like really, really, it's, it's funny. fucking funny. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, Idris Elba. So yeah, I'm really excited. I like Will Smith, but. I'm down on Will Smith. But I, I think this is a step up. I think so. A step up? Yeah. Oh, oh, you mean as far as actors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah. Agree. yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm down with Will Smith. Well, and if, if Harley Quinn isn't coming back to Suicide Squad 2, like they, they, they're they saying and everything like that, you're going to have to need like a strong role, and I think well, that, it's that'll... About, it's, with her, it's about 50-50. They, they think she might... Th- it depends on how uh, uh, Prey of... Uh, Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey, it turns out, so we'll see from there. ISIS is terrorizing the shit out of me. Come on, ISIS. There was also rumors that Don Cheeto was supposed to do it. Nothing against Don Cheeto, but Idris Elba, man, come on. Uh, Joe Joe Klineman is not coming back as Rick Flagg. They're uh, gonna recast him. Yeah, was not too. You know the biggest surprising person that is coming back, which I'm glad she is, because she was one of the best parts of the very few best parts of that movie. Margot like uh, uh, Viola Davis ah! as Amanda Waller. Yeah, she played that shit so well. She did. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. All right, time out. You she's guys... she's great. Yeah, she's a really good actress. I, I think she, I think she was the best part of Suicide Squad. All right, Luna, we're going. To I don't play. know about that. But... What do you think was the best part? Probably Will Smith. Yeah, Mar- Marco Robbie was awesome though too. I liked uh, the the Australian guy that did uh, Captain Boomerang. He kind of put a little humor into it. And everything. Oh, I did not like that guy. You did not. Well, like I that. hate that movie by a lot. There's not there are very few redeeming qualities about Suicide Squad. I mean, I think the, the, the bad guy of it, you know, Enchantress, was just kind of a false The bad guy was, face. wasn't that bad. It was all the bad guys. And then, it no, was, I think it it's was... It's the, the fact that that movie came out and exists in general. So if you yeah. remember, like... The, that the, movie's existence. The movie. Batman the Animated Series, that Amanda Waller. Mm-hmm. So, like, when they, uh, like, uh, cats and everything, I'm thinking of, like, that, and you're right, Viola Davis did a yeah. great job of, like, doing it to Oh, team. just, uh, speak, I'm sorry, uh, just because you said... Batman the Animated Series. I went. We we have the DC, DC yeah. and I was looking around on there, and the DC or the Batman the Animated Series is like two seasons. What the fuck does that sound right? But I go and I'm like, every season it's like eighty episodes yeah. per season. Like, yeah. oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All yeah. right. I was kind of the same way too when I bought the uh, DVD version. I'm like, like there's only three discs, but there's like a billion yeah. episodes. It's like, yeah. okay, so like they you get the bang for your buck, you know, and everything though. So. So she's coming back. There's also rumors that Batista is following James Gunn over, and they're saying he's going to be Peacemaker, who uh, who, really, who originally released the Idris Elba story was Collider, and they said, uh, as, as well as the rumors for other characters he's going to put, uh, Collider describes him as a pacifist that loves peace so much they would kill for it. He, so he's a vigilante <laughs> that kills for peace. Mm-hmm. So Peacemaker, Batista's Peacemaker. They're also thinking about Polka Dot Man. Mr. Polka Dot, a villain who grows polka dots on his body that he can weaponize into fireballs. Ratch- Rat Catcher, known in the comics as Otis Flanagan, oh. has been uh, reinterpreted as a woman for the Suicide Squad. Before becoming a Batman villain, Rat Catcher was an exterminator with the ability to control rodents. King Shark, which is dope. My issue with uh, with with uh, uh, Killer Croc in Suicide Squad is they didn't make that motherfucker like 15 Badass. feet tall, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's how I always envision him. So, Dude, in the Flash, I don't know if you've seen that episode on the CW. They may, obviously it looks C T V C G, but still they made King Shark like twenty feet tall. Which if they can do that in the Suicide Squad, I'm so down for that. They can do it. Yeah, I don't think so. And then uh, they also released the the official release date, which is August sixth of twenty twenty one. So, what are your overall thoughts as far as like everything on, that's going on with the Suicide Squad? I'm actually excited for it. I, I'm, I am too. I mean, James Gunn. God, I mean, yeah. he has yet to do me wrong. Yeah. So. Um, I just, I want to see, like, what the new cast of, you know, like, who's, who's going to be in the new squad and everything that, so. Uh, I, I would be hard-pressed to say I'm excited about anything Suicide Squad. I can't say excited. However, since we're already fuck, I, I object, I, I object to us being here. But since we're here. Uh, like, physically here, or? No, I mean, like. In the, st- like, su- that we're right. going to do Suicide Squad, okay. Now that we're here, I mean, well, it's, uh, Vine, I guess, yeah, we'll see. I don't know, man. It's hard. Idris Elba, like, and that, I, that does, that and I love cool. that they're bringing some random ass characters that no, I've heard of Pokemon, Pokemon, Polka Dot Man before. Pokemon Man. Uh, I've never heard of Peacekeeper, and I've never heard of uh, Ratcatcher. Yeah. And for them to do something like that, and then they're gonna make them prominent characters, like that's his thing. Like that, nobody ever heard of, or give a fuck about 
Guardians of the Galaxy before James Gunn, you know? So it's like, if you could take these characters and then your mom's going to know who Ratcatcher is, you know? Like, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's yeah. kind of the thing, though, because you can put, fuck, you can put Chris Evans, Robbie Downey Jr., Idris Elba, you can put all these great actors in a movie, but if your movie sucks anyway, then but, all the great actors aren't going to do anything but, for it. But, I mean, they did the that with Guardians of the Galaxy. Right, yeah. And you're talking about writing, like James Gunn? like No, I, there are reasons to be hopeful. Yeah. I will agree with that. But I will reserve judgment until it comes out because it's just, I've just objected. The concept of Suicide Squad is dope as fuck. Yeah. 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 And we should have got that first movie five years from now. And this, if it started five years ago. Well, we did an entire episode yeah, I know, of the DC but Universe. So that, but those are my reservations. Yeah, okay. Hopefully they prove them wrong. We'll see. I don't know. I, do, I trust James Gunn. I love Idris Elba. We'll see. What about Batista coming over? That'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah, it's weird. But out of those villains, um, I, 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 I because I guess you kind of have two of the same archetypes, like with Deadshot and Peacekeeper. If they're the kind of same, then you kind of need somebody else. Can Can you um, Can you do both Marvel and DC at the same time? Because uh, you know what that means. That yeah. something happens to him at. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> that sucks. So I hope I hope it's wrong. I hope it's not true because I want Batista to. Drax. I'm with CJ. I mean, I, I do like Drax and everything, so hopefully. But then, like, to go off of that, like, when you hear Batista in Guards of the Galaxy, you're like, what? And then he made that thing work. So what if he comes over and he makes this guy work? You know what I well, mean? It's, yeah. But what? it's at the expense of Guardians, and I don't like that. But what if their plans were already, like, to get rid of Drax? If they were already, if he was already on the outs, then yeah. Well, I think I think he wanted any... But if they're, but if they're sacrificing future... I think it Jack's wanted. Projects. I think it wanted any way to get out because he did not like the whole thing with James Gunn. Like he was the most vocal about how they were treating him. Like but doesn't shit. that bum you out if, brother, he, if yeah. he's out of the Marvel universe? I'm. It does bum me out, but I'm more okay with flexibility and change in the Marvel universe because I know after Endgame or after yeah after Endgame, fair enough. It's going to be completely different. All, all bets are off. All bets are off. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So. And he's in game, obviously. So yeah. we can literally Endgame. just get a brand new cast of. People. But we need them for three. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Maybe they don't. No, we do. He's a guardian. We need him. Maybe he's no longer... Maybe he's guarding... His, oh, yeah, he's dead. Maybe oh, he's guarding his grave. Maybe. Probably. You know, you know what is going to happen for sure, though, Guardians right? of the Galaxy is just Robert, Rocket Raccoon chasing his tail in a circle for, like, three hours. <laughs> a jar of mayonnaise for yeah. an hour. You know what definitely is going to happen in Endgame? Captain America's gonna die. All right. Oh, oh, no. uh, last second. <laughs> so in Florida news, I was searching up until last night, and there was no real juicy Florida news story until the I. I, I know that's exactly the face I made too. But, <laughs> the Florida people spider sense yeah. started thinking like I need to do something stupid right now. <laughs> but something did happen. Uh, last second winner. Um, yeah, because honestly, I was gonna use this story about this, and it's not really funny. It's kind of fucked up. But uh, I'm glad this this story won because if not, the story we was going to use was about a guy jerking off to kids walking to school, oh. which is weird, I know. So thank God man gets bitten after jumping on, attacking Pelican in viral video. So. <laughs> he literally jumps off this pier and jumps on the Pelican and somebody yells at him like, you can't mess with Pelicans. And this Pelican just swipes at his face, dude. And he just like instantaneously like, like starts like beating from his yeah. like yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fuck that guy. We'll fuck with Pelicans. Yeah. Alrighty. So we're moving on to the main event, which you guys are probably want to hear, and I think we have the most discussion on to do about. So and that is Captain Marvel. That is the twenty first movie released in the MCU, which is bananas. Twenty one movies in a interconnected universe. Let alone, I was like, I've been saying let, 23rd. Yeah, let al- <laughs> CJ's been like Yeah, this is the twenty third movie. Twenty first <laughs> let alone like Four movies connected in the universe. This is 21 movies either adjacent or purposely connected, right? Wait, wait, can we can we do something first? What's that? Can we get to his hot take? Because I want, I want. Can we? Hot take. We'll do it after Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Let's I mean, this is this is the yeah. This is the meat of. I want us judging you during this conversation. Well, well, maybe maybe it'll organically bleed in. Like maybe if you Probably know. Probably not. It's dude. It'll take. Okay. Over well, the show. maybe. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe, no, you're right. You're fine. Okay, Wait till the end. Okay. So, starring, we have... But Brie, start judging him okay. right now. Okay, <laughs> That's yeah. me judging you right now. Yes. I'm getting judged. Okay. Yeah. We have Brie Larson, not Brie Olsen, as Captain Marvel. We have... Sam, you get that. Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. Ben Mendelsohn as Taller or Keller. The, the Talos. Talos. Yeah, that was supposed to be an S. Good call. 
We have Jude Law as uh, Jan Rog. We have uh, Clark uh, Gregg as uh, Phil Coulson, a young Phil Coulson. Annette Benning as Marvell and Dr. Wendy Lawson. Lashana Lynch as Maria Rambo. And then we have uh, Lee Pace as Ronan the Accuser. It's not, it was nice to see Ronan the Accuser. Right? Yeah. yeah he sounded so, so young. Yeah, right? yeah. And it was good because I feel like out of all the Marvel villains, which they have an issue with except the handful of them, that the underuser villains, I feel like he is the most... I wish they would have done more with him uh, from the first Guardians of the Galaxy. So they said, like in the like the comics, he has a really pertinent role. Yeah, yeah, and, he, and he's a, and yeah. yeah, they just use him for the one and done. Yeah. So, um, in their defense, it's a lot to yeah, I understand. Have to work yeah. with, have to fit in. Carol Danvers first appeared in 1968, originally known as Miss Marvel, not Captain Marvel. The character had fought for feminist causes throughout her her comic book history, which is contradictory to how they drew her in some of the storylines where she was raped and stuff like that. So it was the 60s and 70s, so it was kind of bad. Uh, but the filmmakers focused on a much more recent uh, recent work, basing Captain Marvel's on-screen origin story on a celebrated 2012 reboot written by Kelly Sue DeCormick, which is how we know Captain Marvel from this movie and her costume and, and her origin story and everything like that is recent as only as like 2012. And the, the Marvel Universe, if you guys obviously know, started in 2008. So it's kind of been... Really, a very recent reboot of Captain Marvel that is now a very prominent figure in the comic book uh, world in for Marvel, and obviously now is going to play a huge part in uh, in the in the movie. Role which so. which tells you a couple things. They didn't plan this out from two thousand eight, which is which shows an incredible ability to adapt. Well, they had only planned to the Avengers, and then after that, it was an, another set of planning. That I, is incredible. Just yeah. knowing that is incredible. Yeah. I can't. I could suck Marvel's dick all day, and they deserve it. Yeah. Those memes. She's still, uh, she's still sucking after you nut. That's you on. Yeah. <laughs> this is on Marvel. Yep. Uh, Disney's Mar- uh, Let's see. Captain Marvel is launched, is launching to an estimated 156 million dollars this weekend, earning 61.4 on Friday, and then I think they earned like 20 something million on that Thursday. So quite a little bit of money, and. It officially today, it said that it did 160 actually, and that puts it seventh all time in, in all the Marvel movies. So only well, behind um, event all three Avengers, Black Panther, Iron Man three, and Captain America: Civil War. So those are the only ones that it's behind. So um, Rotten Tomatoes last time I checked though was 79. Yeah, which is kind. It, it well, ranks it ranks it ranks 16th out of 21. When you account for like incels and trolls and shit like well, that. Well, that is the controversy that I'm gonna get into. 79 from the critics. It has like a, okay. f- and it has a fifty three percent audience score, and that is with, uh, that is with with Rotten Tomatoes purging all the incels from. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, you're right. They can't get all of them, so. Yeah. But there, CJ alluded to that there has been a controversy that uh, a lot of people, even before the movie even came out, like two weeks before, they bombarded Rotten Tomatoes, which but with just a bunch of nasty shit, just talking about Brie Larson. Um, just talking about just there being a, a female superhero, just the whole thing. Well, they took they took something she said completely out, out of context. Of, oh, I had a Twitter argument. I don't know if you saw it. I didn't. Know. Yeah, I had a Twitter argument with one of my friends that they're not watching, or they didn't think that you know all these quote unquote SJWs were defend because of something that her she said. And I was like, have you even heard what she actually That's not said? Actually, no, yeah. And then it's like, well, they're just saying to kick up, uh, kick all the white dudes out and have a bunch of minorities come in. And I'm like, no, Which is not what she said at that all. That is not exactly what she said. She said that in order to really get a full representation of movie criticism, you should have included not kicking out women, people of color. Uh, disenfranchised men meaning gay men trans, what, what, what's, transgender what's, men and stuff like that so then people took that as Brie, Olsen, or Brie, Brie Larson saying <laughs> Brie Larson saying oh we should kick all the white dudes out and just have people of color and that is exactly not what she said she said we have to include more you can, you're invited people. to this party why don't those people come to the party too yeah. and that, and people took it way out of line so all these I'm going to keep using it all these incels came in and bombarded Rotten Tomatoes and started, just started talking <coughs> nasty shit and even before that there was a campaign in September. I shouldn't call it a campaign, but really, is what it is. People got together. They wanted to do a thing, and they started f- uh, photoshopping a bunch of smiles on Brie Larson's oh, stuff. Like you should smile more because they said that from all the posters in the That's previous. Like a thing, yeah. That yeah. So it's like, guys, like we're better than this. But, are we though? Because I'm not sure we are. Yeah, most we're of us are. Shady. I I think most of us are better than that. Probably. But I'm so glad that even before we dissect the movie and we talk about what we like, what we didn't like, whatever. I'm glad it's doing well. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. So, 
future from going mo- moving forward i think that no matter what people want to do to kind of derail movies like this ultimately if people want to go watch it they're going to go watch it and th- the seventh best out of 21 movies the seventh really best release of all time for the for this franchise it's, it's probably a vocal minority probably that's what it is on the internet it's a bunch of vocal minorities they 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 get the biggest platform though yeah. and that sucks so it does suck yeah Alrighty, um, what other background information do I got on this before we get into it? They made some changes on Rotten Tomatoes. Like they're not going to have the want to see score anymore. Like you can't do that. You, it's only going to be after the movie's release. So, um, and That's after awesome. and I read an article after this. A lot of people actually are turning to CineScore, or excuse me, Cinema Score more because it's a li- more limited number of people that are actually allowed to comment it, and it has an A plus on it. So it's cool. Good. Okay. Not so, only kind of give away or. Thoughts or yeah. So what? Who wants to give me the synopsis real quick? Like you open up a book, you think you want to read it. There's like a little th- two paragraph synopsis. Who wants to give it to me? Uh, okay. Uh, so basically, some stuff happens, and <coughs> like there's these people. That's a good start to the synopsis. <laughs> no. Uh, stuff happened. So <laughs> win. <laughs> like wow, okay. So I'm so enticed. So uh, we. Find Captain Marvel, uh, who isn't Captain Marvel, she's Veers at the, at this point in time. <laughs> she's hanging out with the Kree. Uh, we meet the enemy, Scrolls, who are shape-shifting fuckers. Pickles, pickles. Yeah. Uh, and they uh, end up on Earth. Uh, she ends up stranded by herself fighting what she thinks is a uh, scroll invasion. Uh, she comes across Samuel L. Jackson and Agent Colston. And it's surprisingly, they, he didn't drop any motherfuckers. Yeah, I know. I was so upset has, about that. He has had it with these motherfucking scrolls and this motherfucking Earth. <laughs> and uh, poll question: Has has Nick Fury had it with these motherfucking scrolls on this motherfucking planet? <laughs> uh, and so they end up fighting, and uh, there's a big twist, which we don't want to get to uh, quite yet, probably. Um, but hijinks ensue. Okay. Alrighty, we'll, we'll go from there. Before we get into spoilers... Yeah, I couldn't really... You can't really say yeah, much about Before we get into spoilers, what did you guys think? Just overall. I love it. I I walked in with a... Uh, pre I mean, like... Not really bad, like... But I, I walked in thinking, like... Nah. And it, 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 it surpassed. So I yes. will agree with Barker. And, and not that... Not that... How was one of those guys on Rotten Tomatoes like, oh, women superheroes? I'm just like, I feel like out of all the movies, I feel like I had the least expectations for this movie, but I think it cleared it. I think pretty, pretty well. I did have a lot of things to nitpick in the movie, yeah. but uh, but I, ultimately I did, I did, I did enjoy it. So um, let's see. All right, we'll we'll get into it. Spoilers from here. Go fuck yourself if you haven't seen the movie. You son of a bitch. What is one thing that you guys specifically like? Uh, uh, huh? Sorry, me. One thing I specifically liked. Okay. Well, I like a lot of things. I like the. I don't. I don't know if we want to get into the twist, but I like that. The spoilers. I like how they wrote it. I like the story. Okay, this is gonna sound weird, and it's gonna sound like a criticism, but it's not meant to be. This scene. I just. It's just something I noticed. This story seems more contained than any other Marvel story so far, I think. I think that's on purpose because it's the, it's supposed to be the first one. Like, it's the first right Marvel okay. story. Okay. Even right though on. it's the 21st movie, it took place before any other ones. Although there was a Black Panther... Well, technically well, there was a Black Panther before yeah. and an Ant-Man before. Which one are you talking um, about? Captain America. The, oh, you're right. I forget Avenger. about it. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's right. But I guess it... In the way that it lays tracks, like we get the Avengers name and all that stuff, like we get a motivation for why Nick Fury wants to build the Avengers. Build yeah, yeah. Avengers so, Initiative. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess in that perspective, yes. But yeah, he's up. Okay, so let's say second. Yeah. Let's say okay, second. but yeah, but there's probably, I would, I would bet there's probably fewer named characters on this movie than there has been in any other Marvel movie. There's probably fewer, mm, like. Set pieces probably. It just felt smaller, but that's not necessarily necessarily a bad thing, because they wrote a really cool. It's all about how you write, I think, a lot, a lot of it, and they wrote a really cool story with a really cool twist in it, and it, it kind of flipped itself 
over, and I really loved it. I, I love how they wrote it. I'll ask you this: Did either one of you guys see it coming? No, you didn't see the the Jude Law. The, oh well, no, how no, no. the scrolls weren't the I, bad guy. Oh, well, that that one. Did, no, we that's can, what, we can go full spoilers. We can go full spoilers. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, no, I didn't see the scrolls. I I knew just from. I figured he like helped them, like they like he was betraying. I thought. He, well, the only thing that I got twisted was I thought he was going to be scroll. I thought that he was going to be infiltrating a scroll, and then ultimately, like that's the battle. What and that that twist? I knew that Jude Law's character Yon Rog was going right. to be bad. I right. knew that coming in from right. just all the stuff I read, and actually the. But well, you can tell like there's a trailer. Yeah, with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but what I didn't see coming, you're right, is that they flip roles. Is that the scrolls? Oh, excuse me, the scrolls were the the. the, the good guys. <laughs> a race, a race of Nick Krolls. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> A race of Nick Crows, that they were the good, that were the ultimately the refugees. They were the ones fleeing, and the um, the Cree, the Cree were the actually the, the ones, yeah. the bad guys. So I didn't that's see that coming. Yeah, that that, that that I didn't see that coming. So yeah, you're right, you're right. I mean, I, I love how they did that. It yeah. was really cool. That's a cool story. I agree. Honestly, I agree. All right. Um, and CJ remembers when we talked about this. Uh, one of the things that dead air let's go <laughs> okay I, I like how as soon as i start talking i get the snick you know but um i talked to him one of the things i i really wanted from this movie is that it connects you know i didn't want like certain things to, like not be part of it you know because we get captain marvel easter eggs through almost every movie so i was just hoping it's a period piece and like you said it's technically the first one and everything we've got to make sure that everything lines up so like we don't get this like well you know, Sam Jackson, you know, didn't lose his eye. It's just like, or, you know, Project Pegasus was actually called, like, Project Unicorn. Like, yeah. we gotta make sure it lines up and everything. That, But I liked that, yeah, the story just all connected. Uh, you know, you got, you got it lined up to basically Iron Man, and from there, you know, it, um, the story-wise, like CJ said, was really good. I liked that twist. That was what I really liked. Except for one thing, and that'll probably be later on in the show. But other than that, I mean, casting wise is great. Uh, the de aging of uh, Greg Clark and Sam Jackson, Jackson. Yeah, that was that was amazing. That was really good. I really and even lo- Ronan too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I really liked that. The only thing that I noticed is you can't de age the way somebody moves because they, uh, Sam Jackson did move like he was seventy one years old or whatever. You know, <laughs> the one that it stood out to me anyways was when he's petting the cat and. Uh, Captain Marvel was like, Fury, we gotta go. And then he gets up and he puts his leg on his knee and he gets up real <laughs> slow. And I'm like, oh yeah, he's 71 years old or whatever. Or the, the fight with the the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everything. Yeah, like that. yeah. And he's like running and you could tell it's yeah, like it's yeah. a 71 year old man running. Yeah, you know? and, and, it's a bit, and you know, that's just the kind of a shit talking thing. But yeah, you know, the just the the way he looked and the way uh, Agent Coulson looked like, it was. You, you, yeah, if that's somebody's really first Marvel movie, you you're not thinking like, oh, like you know whatever, and you've never heard of Sam Jackson, which is impossible. You never heard of Sam Jackson, you know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, no, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. People in the Amazon know Sam Jackson. Yeah, exactly. Really, yeah. like you know, you get down, you know, you're trying to teach them everything. They go <laughs> Sam Jackson. They go Sam Jackson, motherfucker. <laughs> like there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Correlation. Oh, what is one thing I like? I like quite a few things. I liked. I like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. Cool. I know there was a lot of controversy for that. Um, my first exposure to Brie Larson was Scott. Po- I I talk about the show or that movie at least one, one once every show. But she is uh, Scott Pilgrim's old ex girlfriend who plays in the Demons or uh, what what's the band name? Uh, Clash of Demon Head, and she's a lead singer in that. And it's like she has the vegan boyfriend, the whole thing. And that was my first exposure to Brie Larson in in any capacity. And I've been a big fan since. You know, she's won an Oscar since then or yeah. whatever. And going into this, I'm like, I wonder if I can forget that she was in Scott yeah. Pilgrim. Totally like Scott Bob. Pilgrim dated Captain Marvel and had to fight Superman and Captain America. You're like, absolutely right. Because like... Captain America and Superman were in that movie. But yeah, no, I totally bought her. I love that the... the Because it's a Marvel movie, you know, they're going to have quips and shit like that. And I've had issues with the quips and, and, and stuff like that in other Marvel movies because I feel like they don't let the situation sit long enough for us to care because sometimes they have to sneak in a joke. I bought every single joke that she gave in this movie and it didn't feel she, out of... Just, ca- just that she's a smart ass. Like yeah, that. I, I, didn't buy, I didn't think it was out of character. I didn't think like it was written just like shoehorned in there. I thought that she was like she this, like this yeah. smart ass kind of really kick ass woman and 
Um, and I really, I really like that. And I never not bought that she was not Captain Marvel, you know. So I really like that in this movie. So. The only problem I have with her being cast, and it, she can't run. If she is. I noticed ridiculous. that too. Yeah. I noticed that too. And She's that, like the Steven Seagal of running. <laughs> Everything else is perfect. YouTube Steven Seagal running. You yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. It's, it's great. No, th- there was a lot of running problems in this movie. Yeah, I feel like people were running. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. She can't run. She She's can't probably run. not very athletic, but it's <laughs> fine. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not holding it against her. It did stick out to me. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Whenever she was captured by the scroll, yeah, she's and like she's running. running after them, and she yeah, can't. Yeah, run. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Or like uh, right there at the train scene and everything that you can see, like they CGI did and everything. But even then, you can tell it's just like. She's, yeah, she's people, not a runner. Like, <laughs> the people in this movie are not runners. I don't know. There's like Nobody a, can run in this movie. Like in, her, in her defense, yeah. I did see some YouTube videos behind the scenes of her training, like fighting and stuff. That looked pretty cool. Like she. Oh, looked, she's probably up. Yeah. Some people just can't run. Yeah. yeah. Look at Steven Seagal. He's a perfect example. <laughs> Go, yeah, YouTube, like David said, YouTube, Steven Seagal. Really. Have keto chat. It'll make your day. <laughs> Have you seen, no, what you should YouTube too is uh, his last, like, uh, karate or whatever he does. I saw that. Uh, on yeah. yeah, yeah. Where he's like bored or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like the guy, so like the guy's totally into. Like he knows he's taking a fall, so he's like, huh? and then like all Steven Seagal does is grab his arm, and the guy's like, Ugh! <laughs> that's pretty great. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, what is one thing that not necessarily you didn't like, but or had issues with, but it's like could have done better, you know, whatever. I, okay, you know me. You know how I, what I look for in movies. <clears throat> um... One thing, I, and I don't know how you do this, write it better, but it, it, you know, it was greatly written. I, Captain Marvel is obviously, I mean, she's probably the most powerful character in the universe now, is she, with the exception of maybe, probably Thanos, maybe, maybe. I wanted, like in Venom, the one thing they did so beautifully was they just had a room full of dudes and showed Venom just running through that shit. You know what? I, I want ca- a scene of that for Captain Marvel. I want to see her true potential. And maybe we'll get that in Endgame. It's possible. But I wanted it in this movie. I thought that scene was going to be where she finally faces her crew at the end and they're playing No Doubt. That they're- that scene is stylistically really cool and it lasted way too long. She could have run through those motherfuckers like nothing. And she I, should have. I, I wish there was more... Of them, and she could run through more. I actually, exactly, yes. I don't feel we ever got that scene where she's just like she just looks like a complete fu- like you know where I where I thought they did it better was the little battle star in the uh, yeah in the in the yeah. bar scene where she just runs through fifty. It should have been like that, yeah. And, and you know for a fact that these guys are the baddest motherfuckers on the planet, yeah. these bounty hunters, and she just makes mincemeat out of these dudes them, and just yeah. murders these motherfuckers. Where I agree, like I don't. She does come off as a badass, but I don't ever feel. We never see her two potential. Exactly. Right? Her, so maybe we potential. maybe we do see it in Endgame. I hope so. Absolutely. So yeah, so. but I, I agree with you. Yes, yes. Okay. Parker, what's one thing that was like, man? Eh. Oh, man. You know, for, for Marvel that has, you know, billions and billions of dollars and uh, Kevin Feige, mm-hmm. you know, not Fage, CGI. you know, you would think you put a little bit so more a. into the CGI. Yeah, and I actually put that on your CGI question mark because I wanted you want to talk about. It. At times, it did look kind of wonky and weird because uh, they have done. I mean, they've done <laughs> fucking. They did the Battle of New York with those aliens, and that did not. So have, the Titan battle. Or they, or they, they, Age of Ultron, the scene where they're inside the chapel and they're just like fighting, like, and none of that ever missed the beat. Where I feel the train scene looked kind of off a little bit, like when she jumped on the train, that looked weird. Uh, other other parts did stick. Kind, kind of the end when she's like in space and destroying like that whole the whole uh, you know armada. Yeah. From the Kree and everything that it just to me is just like man you you have billions of dollars and like you have the best CGI of all time and it just kind of looked like I know it's a '90s piece but it looked like something you did on Windows ninety five. Yeah. Like I'll, I didn't like that. I also that. did not like Watch the, the twist in it. I feel like, you know, now that the scrolls are, you know, kind of the victims and everything, we're not going to get the storylines that we're going to get later on down the road. A lot of, I was, I try to avoid as much, like, YouTube videos and reaction of what they thought, because I kind of want to keep it fresh and original and organic. One thing I did watch, though, is uh, there was a lot of people speculating that somebody was going, somebody was always going to be a scroll. And they want to do a secret invasion storyline as far as like scroll come the scrolls come to Earth. One of them has always been an Avenger. I think they and I agree. I wish they could have done that because I think that ultimately would have been the next uh, Infinity War, like maybe 
five or six years down the line. But I understand why they didn't want to do that because I think they wanted to keep everybody no, because it ruins real and organic. Yeah. yeah, because if you do that to be, because they can't do it. Too, that rips your heart out. Like they, it's, they, yeah. they they can't do that to, uh, to they can't do that to somebody that's too much of a prominent character. So they were never gonna do that to Captain America. They were never gonna do that to Iron Man. Specifically, never, never Iron Man, because if he ends up being a scroll, then this entire thing was for naught. You know what I mean? Yeah, they can't. Yeah. So then you you're lower to tier two, which then is like okay, but then it really doesn't mean anything because it's like. Do you consider Black Widow a tier two Avenger or a tier one Avenger? Tier two. I don't know. Yeah. I consider them all tier one. So. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think Rhodey is a tier one Avenger. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think of it like that. I think of it as like collective. Yo. <laughs> I do. It's, I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, I think of Captain America as the leader of that collective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or but, some people would say Iron Man. Well, some people are wrong. <laughs> That's just how I think of it. But anyways, but yeah, no, but I understand what you're saying though. Basically, my long whining point was to yes, I agree. But I think you, I think you have two camps in that argument. As far as like they wanted to see that, as far as like somebody being. But what you have to give up is not worth having to see that. Yeah, and then some people were like, you know, let's let's keep it this way. So, um, yeah, I'm I am way. I'm way more okay with them not following the comics than I think. Well, and that was one of my points. Captain Marvel is probably the most removed from the original comic books than um, any of the other ones, and I'm okay with totally that. Fine with that. I'm okay with one. I'm okay with Wonder Woman. I'm okay with Captain Marvel being its own thing in the movies. Yeah, absolutely. Like when people are like, it's really cool. like in the comics. Well, you should have forgot about this since Iron Man. Like it's they're building their own universe, and actually in the comic books, if they, you want the comics, read the comics. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And actually in the comic book continuity. In the multiverse and stuff, they've created um, um, an Earth dash whatever number that's strictly this universe yeah. because not every universe mirrors each other; they're all no. different. So you know, it's cool that they do that. I, yeah, you know. but I mean, like I, like I said, like uh, we can do that, but like I was just hoping for that. Cause, yeah, no, I understand. I mean, that scroll invasion just. I mean, I, I would think like after Thanos and they can Endgame still everything. Just because they did away with that doesn't mean they can't well, I mean, have something like that. With the Fox merger and everything, that we can still get Super Scroll, and that can go into a Secret Invasion. So we could possibly still get that, but like I said, when I saw like that they were the victims and they just wanted to go home, if like, you trust someone to figure I was it like, out, damn, we don't get a we don't get a you know Secret Invasion. Which is actually, I mean, it's it's in my top three of like story arcs yeah, for yeah. the comics. Yeah, it's it's a good one. I liked it, and yeah, I would have liked to see that, but like I said. I'm. I can see why they did it, and they wanted to keep everything kind of original. Which you don't know. Maybe there was, you know, a Renegade Scroll that you know. Looking back at Captain Marvel, we'll see some kind of Easter egg or something. But for now, it, I guess it is what it is. But I, I you know, I, I can agree to why uh, you didn't like it. One thing I didn't like. They seem kind. Con- they seem contradictive, but you'll get it when I say it. There was not enough. Not enough nineties. At some point, no, I agree with that. And then too yeah. much nineties. Too much nineties. And yeah. too, there was not enough nineties and too much nineties. So I love that scene where she fights uh, all the Kree, her old, her old crew. But just for them to throw no dot in it, I'm like, okay. Oh yeah, that was well. I think it was more that it was just a girl. Yeah, rather than yeah. No but it's a it's a very nice. But then song. afterwards, like when they're sitting at the table and everything, like REM gets on, like we get it. It's in the nineties, yeah. you know, like. But, I, I I think they underdid that. But to be honest. when when she's running around L A or, or I don't even know where it's at. Um, L A. I think I think it, it, I think it is L A. I think that's the L A. train. Yeah. Um, I don't think then there's an, she crashes into the blockbuster and she uses a payphone. But besides that, we don't get any other inclination that it's the '90s. So it's either not enough '90s, and when she's running through the train, you see some people kind of dress '90s, but so the. The guy, there should have been a guy with a boombox. Exactly, it like, should have been super '90s, yeah. super neon colors, and then oh, there is too much '90s, um, and particularly with the soundtrack, one that really, and even that same video I watched about the uh, the scroll thing that I talked about, another thing, and I and I saw that right away too, and this is just showing my my Nirvana fan fan kind of thing. So when she goes back and she speaks to the intel the supreme what, intelligence, supreme intelligence. Uh, she's like, oh, and you brought music with you. She was kidnapped in 1989. Nevermind came out in 1992, 1993. There's no, absolutely no way that she would have listened to Come As You Are. So I think they just threw Damn. There's no way that she would, unless like she's listening to it with Nick Fury on the way driving, there's no way that she would have known Come As You Are. 
You know what I mean? So no, I, that's amazing. Yeah, that, like, dude. You were thinking of that. Like, while the movie was going... Dude. Wow, that's amazing. Absolutely. Because this movie takes place in 1995. And there's no way that she would have... God, watched. I would love to just been there while you're watching it. And you're just like, no, no, Stop no, this bullshit. Stop this. Stop this, this, this is bull- done. No. Like, so, wow. and, and out of memory, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Because she would have not have listened to, to Nirvana. Because she was abducted in 1989. That's amazing. <laughs> Emil really loves Nirvana. Yeah. No, I mean, he's, he's a music nerd. Like he, he's, he's got a Nirvana that. nerd. But that, oh my god! Wow, being a music nerd, wow. he's a Nirvana nerd. Dude, so, you yeah. just made my day right there, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw, as I was talking to Barker, I saw his face like, "What the fuck?" I was like, <laughs> I was pissed off that there were no Backstreet Boys, but then he pointed out that they were later. It was we, 1995. Yeah. yeah. We did the Wikipedia. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and and I actually caught this too, as uh, whenever they were uh, uploading the black box recording. Not dead air, not dead air, not dead air, not okay. dead air. Okay. Um, That's not how that works. So, um, what was I? Oh, yeah, when they were uploading the the black box good. or whatever, I was like, what's it doing? It's, it's uploading. Because they're advanced. <laughs> they're, they're just chilling. <laughs> they're, they're like, oh, they're this so normal. advanced yeah. in technology. They're like, what the fuck is it doing? Like, wasn't it playing? But they they had a screen. They had a shot while she was, like, clicking around. There's a calendar that said July of, like, 1995. So we know that it's July 1995. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, but yeah, but 89 is when in six years. So yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. Um, that was one. That was the one thing that stuck out to me. So. Two cool things that I read, like, right when, right before CJ picked us up and everything, that there was two Pulp Fiction Easter eggs. Really? I didn't notice yeah. it. So the first one is when um, Sam Jackson... And Clark Gregg, who is a scroll at the time, uh, they're driving, uh, like to chase uh, Brie Larson uh, on the train and everything like that. So, like, how they uh, did the scene and everything, they're doing the camera through the window. That's where it. it's Clark Gregg and then it's Sam Jackson, and he looks at Sam Jackson That's looks a, at him okay. and everything. Just the way it's, it was a, filmed. it's, it's yeah. from back when uh, it's uh, John Travolta and everything, and he's driving the car and everything, and he looks at him the same way. So, they did it uh-huh. like that. Second one that's was. Cool. Do you when, think that's the same car? It's not the same car, oh. but they they shot it the same yeah, way. Yeah. It's it's it like it's almost the exact same very like frame. Shot, and yeah. yeah. Second one was when Talos finds them at Rambo's house and yeah. everything that, and he's drinking like that milkshake and everything that. That cup is the exact same one that uh, Jules from Pulp Fiction. When really. He's like. He's like you know, like, oh, you know, mind if I take a drink of your old beverage, you know, and he yeah. drinks it and everything. It's the exact same cup. Huh. Thank you, because I'm a Tarantino fan. I, Pulp I Fiction is my top three yeah. of all fucking time. Yeah. Like, thank you guys for putting some Pulp Fiction in That is cool. And that makes sense, because Pulp, Pulp Fiction was 94, and this took place in 95, so to kind of, you know, and Sam Jackson's in it. So yeah, it makes a lot yeah. of fucking sense. Yeah. Uh, second one that we were talking about, the Stan Lee cameo. Dude, you know what he was reading? Mallrats. Mallrats. That's fucking dope. And then I saw the next day Kevin Smith was on his Twitter was a blubbering mess because he's like, he's loved these movies for years and now he exists within this universe because he was reading the Mallrats <laughs> yeah. screen, which, Ma- which Stan Lee was actually in Mallrats. He yeah. made a quick cameo. That to me was everything. I was watching that I'm like, oh shit, that's in Mallrats. That's fucking Well, dope. like you see yeah. the cameo and like you, you kind of get that glimpse of the, the, the book and everything that and it goes back to Brie Larson's face and everything. So I was kind of intrigued. I was like, I wonder what he was reading, you know? So I looked back onto it and thank you for uh, Cinema Blend who yeah. actually, well, I don't think they uncovered it but they, I, I read it on there and I was like, thank you. That's yeah. kind of like taking it back in but now it's kind of like that conundrum. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah, as far as like the comic book creator is in the universe, universe yeah, or is, I, I, is the universe in the in you know yeah, you yeah. gotta you gotta you gotta separate some of that stuff like you can't let that drag it down. No, uh, it doesn't let me drag. No, I, I know, but yeah. a lot of people on the yeah because yeah. I read a lot of people on the internet were like, oh, but what does this mean about the thing and no. the creator? It's just the it's just the it's just the cool it's ode. just the cool ode yeah. to Stanley. And honestly, I love that they took two seconds. For so Brie Larson like and she's like she stops, like yeah. yeah she yeah exactly she she moves the things to see if she's a scroll she, Stanley looks at her Brie Larson then looks at him or I should say Captain Marvel because we're within the scene and then they like smile at each other and that to me and they took time like two yeah. seconds out of the movie to do that and I fucking love that which real quick did you guys like the the Marvel intro with all of Stan Lee's cameos yeah, and stuff cool. I really really like and then like they that. say thank you Stan yeah, like, I really that, really yeah, yeah I was just like good yeah I hope they do it for all of them. From now on, I mean, I think they might do it one more time. I don't know. I think know that if... would like take the coolness out of it if they did that. Like, 
know. Like, it could be just as one container. Well, no, no, no. I, like, that's like, what it is for Captain Marvel. Like, I think that makes it cooler. Maybe in-game, do the Stanley one one more time, and then go back to the original one. Yeah, yeah. But at least be like, thank you, Stan. Yeah. You know, or like, somewhere in the credits, just I don't be know, like... because it takes the Like, all this was made Captain possible Marvel. from, for Stanley. But it takes the exclusivi- exclusivity away from Captain Marvel. Like, that's a reason that Captain Marvel's cool. Like, I... I yeah, I, like I, I do like what you're saying. At the end of the credits, just like thanks, Stanley. Well, sure, something that's like that. something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like that. The Captain Marvel was the only the one first movie after he passed away to yeah. do a specific. And then the only one that yeah. gets that. Yeah. I like yeah. that. That's cool. Yeah. A specific. Time. But at least give like an homage to him. You know, like something. I mean, yeah. he's the reason why. But anyway, we're, my why uh, we're doing this. Yeah, my uh, larger angry point is like do we can't just let something be cool. Yeah. Just be a cool thing yeah. that happened. It doesn't have to mean. It can just mean exactly what it means on face value. It's an ode to Stanley, and it's it can be cool. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, Shut up, internet. So nerds. let's see. What did you guys think as far as like the backstory for his eye? I thought it'd be more bad. <laughs> we talked about that. You know, and they almost hot <laughs> tub, they almost hot tub time machined it, where like he gets I'm like <laughs> you know what I mean? The guy that loses his. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, we can talk <laughs> yes. about this. Yeah. No, no, do it, do it, I wish they would have done it two more times or at least one more time. So he gets cut in the eye and he's like, How's your eye feeling? Oh, sorry, I'll be alright. I wish they'd have done it at least one more time. Yeah. And then he loses his eye. So, I wish they totally So when we were driving from the movie theater, we we're like, Okay, we can't talk about it, we can't talk about this. It's like, fuck it, we're gonna talk about this. Abel's gonna be mad, but who cares? And so that was the first thing we talked I didn't about. Say he cares. I said as long as we don't tell Abel. Yeah. <laughs> and which you totally did. did. So yeah, uh, CJ said it best. Just like, the whole time, you know, like, he just gets like, like, battling like Kree guys and scroll guys and like, he keeps getting hit in that eye and just trying to, and then like, at the end, he's like, at the end credit scene. scene. The end of credit scene. The very end credit scene. If he like, I was, th- I was thinking the example I used was like, he fucking like, popped a champagne glass or something, cork goes in his eye. Just something completely dumb and random. <laughs> like, that would have been so funny. And this whole time, he's like, Barely, the whole movie, he's just barely, barely missing his eye. That would have been so, and then just something innocuous at the end. That would have been so fucking funny. And they completely missed opportunity to make that awesome. I mean. Or like it, he falls it, on some, like something dumb. And like it hit, hit the door. Yeah. I think that was just as dumb though. The cat scratches him. Yeah. That's pretty dumb. Yeah. But, Although, you but you didn't get that that was the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like right. he was, it was just like. Uh, and like scratch. yeah, back in like Winter Soldier, I that like more, gives I it like less credit now, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like that whole like movie, like he's seriously. Well, last like, time I saw somebody, I lost an eye. Yeah, so you're just cat. like, yeah, it's a cat, and you yeah. got scratched. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. That's what okay. I'm saying. It, it loses a little bit of Nick Fury's badassness, you know what I mean? So it's it's whatever. And then this entire movie, I know Captain Marvel's hold on, like, hold on, hold on, it's Fury. Oh, sorry, Nick Fury. No, it's, it's Fury. Fury. You're right. <laughs> what does your mom call you, Fury? What? Uh, Abel's a scroll. <laughs> But it loses. I think in general in this movie, Fury loses a lot of his badassery because he was just like an accessory, you know. And I understand Captain Marvel is like levels above him, and uh, you know she has superpowers and stuff, and he really can't do much. But like in Captain Mar or in uh, Winter Soldier. He's such a badass in that movie, you know. He has well, the he, he has he, the mini gun in the fucking car. He's just, he rah, rah, gets rah, rah. more badass as he goes. He's yeah, like, he, he had a desk job. He was level three. He's a fine you know, line. Like. It's Sam Jackson, a fine wine, full question. Yeah. I guess you're right, but still, like, I would have liked to see him do a little bit more. Probably, but, yeah. yeah. But just, what's just, he going to do against a super galactic fucking... Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Ultimately, yeah. it comes down yeah. to this is an intergalactic battle. So. Yeah, I, I guess I guess with that, you know, like, he's seen this shit, you know, and everything that, and he's just like, that's how I would get, like... Yeah, right, that's how it and starts. And grizzled and everything. Yeah, I, I, I agree like, with that. So, yeah. Is that a desk job? He's just, like, typing away on his little... In the little canon, thing. this is how it starts. This so, is when his badass that's, starts. That's when he's yeah. just, like... Fuck man, I can't fuck around anymore. There's aliens on in different universes, and there's people with superpowers. So I gotta fucking I gotta get. That. And I thought when it, whenever uh, at the very be- it wasn't quite at the beginning, but whenever they're doing that autopsy, he kept saying shit like uh, I can't unsee this or I can't I, I won't believe my eyes. I thought he was gonna kept doing eye jokes the whole time. I thought he was gonna keep referencing because I, I wish they would have done that. Yeah, well, I, tell- I did. I, I noticed it on that one. I'm like, telling oh, you, shit. if they would have made one more. One more, major, one more like thing. One more thing yeah. to happen to his eye that would have been perfect because the first would have been the thing, the thing scratching yeah. him, and then well, like one more thing could have been like, uh, you know, a blast, he gets, oh, he gets punched a, a, or something, a, a yeah. blast or punch in the eye, and then lastly it would have been like and it's the, still fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, missed opportunity. Yeah, I think it was a drop ball. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see, I got that one there. 
Um, one thing... <clears throat> so I'll put this out in the line. Or I'll put this on record, I should say. How can I put this gently? Nah, to you can't. Just give it to me. Ruffle any feathers. <laughs> so I love the ultimate message behind this movie. Women empowerment, all that stuff. I really dig it. But ultimately, I think it falls short to some movie that did it better. And I think that was Wonder Woman. And I don't think, I don't, and then that's a fine line too. I don't think we should compare like they did women empowerment better than, you know, whatever. But ultimately, I think that Captain Marvel kind of tried to, it wasn't so subtle where I think Wonder Woman, where I think Wonder Woman was extremely subtle. They don't go out of their way to kind of like, you know, this, this movie's about women empowerment, which I think we should get more movies of that. But I just don't think it was as subtle as. Don't make it as heavy handed. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it was super heavy handed. It didn't take me out of the movie, but it was just something where it's like they're trying to do their Wonder Woman, and yeah. and it was you noticed it in a lot of the, in a lot of scenes, and I'm like, I get it. It'll get better with time. Yeah, probably. and I think yeah, yeah, and for them to wait this long in general to do their first female led superhero movie, you know, that it's kind of something that I think Marvel maybe dropped the ball on. I think, but. Ultimate, like ultimately, like I said, I'm not against the message. Obviously, it's just I think it was a little bit more heavy handed than I think Wonder Woman was. Which, if we're gonna put line up the two movies, I still think that Wonder Woman is a superior movie. But, um, but yeah, that's that's just one thing that kind of didn't take me out of the movie. But walking out, I'm like, okay, well, I think Wonder Woman did this better because honestly, that's what Marvel was trying to do is catch up to Wonder Woman as far as like what they've done already. That so. was that that was their second time writing for Wonder Woman though, because she. Really? And, and, yes. In Batman vs Superman? Yes. Nah. Yes. Nah. She was. Nah. was she? Oh, she, oh she was not in Batman vs Superman. She was, but she wasn't yes. a like that was. She was not the focal point. Agreed. Of that yeah. But uh, what I'm, my point is, it'll come. I think that subtlety is probably hard to do, and it comes with writing for Captain Marvel. Like, but Patty Jenkins had nothing to do with Batman vs Superman. That was all Scott Snyder, and I don't think the point of Woman okay, is hard. Okay. Or sorry, Zach Scott Snyder. He was he's a comic book writer, which he's yeah. not there. Um, but um, oh, he, I, I, get, I, get what you're I don't think he was because the two movies are trying to do the same thing as far as like this woman or this this movie is by women for women, and I think. Just ultimately, like I think they did it better for in in, in in Wonder Woman, and I have to pre I have to context it with saying that I don't think there needs to be levels of women empowerment, but I just think that if you're gonna do the same thing, I think Wonder Wonder Woman wasn't as heavy handed. That's yeah, probably true. Yeah. But we'll, I I think that is the subtle writing is hard hard to do. Like yeah. I said, like allegory and stuff. That's that's all. Those are hard things. I think they'll probably come with writing for her. I think. Probably. I think so too. And and one more other thing. A lot of a lot of a lot of what I take out of this movie is looking forward to the future. That's true, because I am ready to see her just whoop some ass. I I'm ready for it. And like I got how Thor is like the Thanos killing weapon. That's Captain Marvel. Yeah. Which I think <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. I think ultimately is stopping me from liking the movie. You were saying how it's kind of. Um, I have a little bit of pushback as far as you where they th- where I forget if it was you or you that you said it was basically. It's a, it's, encapsulated in one movie where I don't think so. Like I think no, 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 no. What I mean by that is like the contain, s- yeah. The scope of the story isn't like like in Iron Man three. We're going all across the globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I know like, what you're saying. Yeah. Like okay, there, now there's characters everywhere, yeah. and in this movie, there's like five characters. Probably mm-hmm. well, more than that, but a handful of characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all it is, and it's just a streamlined story, and it doesn't involve other, you know, like. All the players who were there at the beginning are there at the end, and it's just a it's just a basic story. It's a great story, but it's confined. That's my only point with that. Uh, it's probably the most confined Marvel movie, and as far as like adding new characters and new yeah, yeah. concepts okay, and things. Right. Okay. Um, so, so I guess it feels in that way. It feels smaller than most yeah. Marvel movies. So, well, I guess then it's not necessarily pushed back against you. Then more than just what I think the movie was in general. I think they were trying to make their their next their Iron Man. I think they're trying to make it to where Iron Man or Captain Marvel is the next spine. I'm okay with that, and I'm okay with that too. Absolutely, I'm okay with it. I just don't think they made a strong enough case in this movie. Probably, they, yeah. They they make it. I think they might make it in Endgame, mm. which ultimately goes to my second point of this movie. I think, not that it's a filler movie, but I think it's a commercial for Endgame, and I didn't like that. I think that's a disservice. To Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, to that director, I think that's a disservice to them because I think they that Kevin Feige and the and the general consensus they wanted to make this a preview movie for 
Endgame. I think and, I disagree with you. And, and although it is kind of confined to its own movie, I think people were still waiting for what she can do for Endgame. And I think that I ultimately I think that handicaps the movie a little bit. I just I think I disagree with you. Really? Because well, not not to say that. Uh, I I do want to see that that she just runs through an army of fools. That's gonna be awesome. But I think they should have done it that. in this I movie. Agree. I, I agree. And with not that. in Endgame because I want to see what she can do in her situation, her story, rather than just in Endgame. I completely agree with that. One kind of pushback you could say is she just released that. Yeah, film. you're right. You're so right. she maybe she doesn't even know. But um, I think the story itself is told well enough. That it's like it, the only real reference to Endgame is that in the end credit scene. Which good transition. Let's get there. What did you guys think of? What did you guys think of the end credit scene? And would you have liked to see her first in that in the the, the universe we know now in the next movie, or do you like that she made two seconds in the end credit? I scene? love it because it shows efficiency. They don't have time to dick around with. Well, Captain Marvel's coming. Like we're gonna, we are gonna get to some fucking shit in Endgame real quick. Um, I agree with CJ on that. She just like, where's Fury? Let's get the fuck to work. I so. absolutely agree too because it, it, it. I got to think about it on the ride home. Infinity War, if anything, as well as being good, or as 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 well as being good, it's also very efficient. It's like. You have you seen the other twenty movies or nineteen movies before yeah. this? Too bad, like we're getting started, <laughs> and I think Endgame is gonna be like that, just right off the fucking bat. Yeah, let's did get you, this shit did, started. Did you yeah. see Captain Marvel? Which a little bit of my problem, like I said, is a uh, kind of a lead up movie. But did you see Captain Marvel? You did it. Oh well, well now you know she's in this movie, so it's gonna be boom, 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 like right That's off cool. the bat. So That's cool. I absolutely agree too that they it took them. To, and I like how they did that. Like, oh, the thing went out. So that must mean that we're out of batteries. We haven't gotten a signal back. Because most of the way communication works is we send a signal. It sends the signal back. We mm. know what's going on with them. It's like, it just ended like we got to power it. And then the, I like how the camera works. Like, it's with Black Widow. And then it's like, boom, where's Fury? And I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really cool. Um, kind of a thing I was, I was talking about. Like, how did they find it? I was thinking about two, that too. Actually, that is kind of a plot hole. I think. Not necessarily. I disagree. Uh, I mean, so logistically, how do they find it? Because Nick Fury. Well, he, there's a tracker. And and, and like, how do they know? Like, but how it do they does know? Something. How do they know what to look for? How to know it exists? They're looking for Fury. They they. But he disappeared. I know. Like but and, that, and, they, and, that, he, and he was and, driving and, him and what's her name? Maria uh, Hill. They were driving an SUV, correct? Is there not a tracker, some way to track? But at the same time, like you're just gonna but look and just is like, the beeper not right drop. Yeah. Did the beeper not drop? But right how do they know it's Fury? How do they know the page is Fury or anything or what to do with it? Shield doesn't exist anymore. How do they know that that's a thing that they're looking for? Yeah, I get it. I, I know what you're saying. That I I thought that too. I mean, I'm glad that they found it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, I mean, and maybe we maybe we gave us some more background story in Endgame, whatever. But... Maybe we're we're not giving him the credit that he deserved, you yeah. know? Because I mean, they're super powered. Black Widow's a spy, you know. We talked like about earlier how smart all these people are. I, I get that, but like, if I'm like, you know, looking around and I find Fury's, you know, SUV like crash and everything, I'm not gonna be like, oh, a pager. Oh, it does something. Oh, let's do something about it. Like, I, I'm gonna, I, I'm I think gonna... I think personally, just for the canon for me, there's enough context clues around the pager to put together that. Oh, this is Nick Fury's. I think, me personally. But. I, maybe we get some more context and background in in, in Endgame. Oh, but yeah, th- I totally. Even as the, the end credit scene was going, and these things are only like a minute long, and I'm thinking like, how the fuck did they find it? Right. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody sees it and recognizes the symbol. No, no, because then they would have talked about it, huh? I mean, it, Captain America was in the ice. Black Widow was still in Russia as a. As well, a child yeah, but they even that. say like they don't know uh, what they're reaching out to. So, Bruce Banner yeah. was probably still in college. And then, like, and another thing, it, it, Rhodey was probably seventy one. Yeah. Don Cheadle's like. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing that uh, that I saw on the internet and just headlines uh, well no I never read the article why didn't he press the button when they invaded when the Chitari invaded Earth or for Avengers Ultron. or Ultron or something yeah. like that and Kevin Feige's trying to talk his way out of it they're like well like because she said only an emergency no because he right? could take because the Avengers took care of it that's why they had the Avengers it was their first two tests and they passed all right. Well, they, they didn't need her. Now they need her because most of the Avengers are dead. So. Well, how does he know that though? Like, how does he know that the Chitari isn't just gonna absolutely like? Doesn't it seem like a real fucking emergency to you? Maybe he would have if it got that bad, but it didn't because we got the Avengers. I, I understand what you're saying, but 
Kevin Feige has kind of backtracked a little bit, and he's like saying, well, you know, um, Captain Marvel only said in real emergencies, and is this really an emergency? And then kind of like, don't you think he, does he really know what this is? It's a last resort. Yeah, 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 kind of an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's an absolute last resort, and I get it. Like, I, I just think it's a cop-out. Plus, well, even Feige. if it's a cop-out, who gives a shit because we get this build-up to this great moment. It's gonna be awesome. I think let's not over dissect it. But I think out of any movie, we have to dissect it a little bit because we're in the nerd fucking world order. <laughs> Fair enough. Good but point. I think ultimately, I think what this movie is gonna do for, in its long run, it obviously introduce Captain Marvel, <clears throat> Brie Olson, uh, Larson. Yeah, no, it's okay. Brie Olson. Um, in let's this introduce u- Brie Olson, in, in this universe, you just really like Brie Olson. Yeah, I guess <laughs> uh, she's not even like top. 50. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. yeah, probably me too. Uh, yeah, you said her name like six times. I know, it's just weird. <laughs> Freudian slip, I guess. She's probably top and bottom. <laughs> uh, inside to side. You get, you get your joke in? Yeah. Alright. Um, ultimately, I think what this movie is going to be remembered for a lot is a lot of continuity errors. As far as like... Be- because so. it's their first venture going back in time and it's hard to write for that. I totally get it. But I, not 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 what it's most remembered for. I I, I might have misspoke. But it's gonna be remembered for a lot of the continuity mix-ups. What, what continuity mix-up? The uh, I can't think of one. And you say there's. We just talked several. about it. Which one, what? The the, the, pager? the pager. The how's that continuity? How Nick? Oh, you're talking about just plot holes in general. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Like and, I said, and I, it's going to get harder. You have to that yeah. And it's going to get point. harder as yeah. more and more movies because it's like, are you really going to remember thirty movies? You know, like six years from that. So, it. I it, think. Uh, I don't think it detracts from anything. I don't, I don't think know. so. I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. It's just little things that are like you know. Yeah, it's certainly not. It, it's it's just. I guess this is. I should say this. This is the first movie where a lot of executives, directors, actors are going to have to start backtracking. Like, well, in the background, like, don't you think that so and so is going to do this and that? And this one in particular, because this was set was set in the nineties, where a lot of things have already been done, and this is supposed to be that that second or first movie that does a lot. Of, you know, whatever. But gener- generally speaking, I think stuff like that detracts from the like enjoying a movie. Like, we can't just enjoy a cool thing. Like. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, and it's not fun to do. What I'm saying is, don't let that detract. Don't let that spoil the movie for you. Like, don't let that ruin the movie for you. Anyone listening, like, just let shit like that. Talk about it, you know, whatever. But enjoy the movie as it is, anyway. Uh, also, I, I do want to point out. I think I have less. You guys talked about, and you kind of talked about this with Ant Man uh, a little bit. Ant Man the Wasp. You think it's probably. It, it's more some of the movies are just kind of commercials for what's coming and that's probably true I think I just generally have less of a problem with that than, it, than you two because it's a, they're while they are making really good single movies they are building a universe and they are leading to things and they are yeah but, but I think but I, I that's but, the goal but if you look at the beginning of the universe like they they're were building, more they're correct. building to something, but I, they're more. But it's here. They're now. more of these movies. They're more. They're more within their own storyline than anything else. You like, mean in the beginning? Yes, at the very yeah. beginning, and even at, like even up until I feel like. But I don't think that's a problem. There, it's I, a, we all understand that it's a series now. It works together, and we need to watch all these movies together. We all understand that. I don't see the problem with it. It's not that there's a problem to it. It's just I think they you can't you can with that you can. You can uh, have your cake and eat it too. I think you totally can't, but I think a lot of it is is super shoved in or ham or you know hand fisted or heavy handed. Where it's like, I guess here's I... End Game or here is you know here's the spine for your next seven years. I guess whatever, I just you know? really don't mind it because all these in- events are interconnected and they all play off each other. I no, I, I really don't mind it. I. I I, I can see where even you're, though I know what's happening, you're yeah. selling the next minute. I get that. I can totally see, I see where you're where you're coming from, but I still think that you can. It doesn't have to be so heavy handed sometimes. Probably, like, you know what I mean. So it's that's just, and it goes back. It to just the, doesn't bug me. It just goes back to the writing, like subtle writing. Like you don't have to like hit me over the head with it. Hey, do you, do you know how he got the Avengers name? Hey, yeah. you know how he got the Avengers. Well, name? He got it off the jet. He got it off the jet. I will like, say, as far as Marvel, they're not great at subtlety <laughs> like yeah. if, we, if we can say anything like it's not they're not 
awesome at subtlety. Yeah. But I'm okay with that. I don't. I, I have less of a problem with that. I think. I think a, another problem, like while we're talking about it too, like I would have wished they would have like done a little bit more connecting to the other characters. Like yeah, because uh, like fucking inventing the Avengers isn't good enough. That's just no, no, no. I'm talking about like you know like. Maybe do a subtle nod to like Howard Stark, or you know, like maybe they're just yeah, like yeah. something about Captain America, like something, you know, like you could, you could especially just kinda with do uh, with uh, Agent Coulson being he's he, him being such a huge Captain yeah, America fan. Like, yeah, oh, I yeah. got these Captain yeah. America yeah. trading cards or something. Uh, I would have liked it. You guys are nitpicking. Not, not well, uh, just a subtle nod. That's all I kind of wanted, you know. That's just just to kind of that's, that's you looking for things wrong in the universe, which we're gonna okay. get to here in a minute. Okay, okay. How do you tie your shoes? I don't want to just slip them off. It's one lace, but you need both sides of the laces, right? I just want that second lace. That's all I want. Fuck your lace. I'm tired of it. All right. Full well, question. Uh, can Dustin's we... just really good at looking for things that are wrong and inventing things to be wrong. Oh, you go ahead. Sorry. Inventing? Can, can we hold this hot taste for next week? No. We're, maybe. we're running long. All right, fine. All right. So, and actually, because next but week. I, I have a quick hot take. Okay. Before. All right. But, but it's it's for the end. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So I think we. Is there anything else that kind of sticks with you that you kind of want to talk about that you need to get off your chest? Uh, no, it's a really good movie. I enjoyed it and go see it. Yeah, really good movie. Go see it. Um, yeah, just have fun with it. Actually, if you were listening to this, you should have seen it. Yeah. So um, I agree. It's, it's yeah. definitely go uh, go see it and go early because I got one of the front seats because I got there late. Nah. So I'm like this. We had good seats. Yeah. We had great. Seats. We had really good. Seats. I should have waited for the ten o'clock showing, which is my mistake. But um, it was actually not even that. Full. It was not busy at all. Ours oh, was yeah. fucking full. It was Real? packed. Yeah. So okay, in our rating system, what do you give it? Titties. Titties? Titties. Titties, me too. Because Kitty's titties are talking about like... Yeah, like, that's... Uh, Winter like, Soldier, Winter Soldier Avengers, yeah. So, yeah, so, like, so, like, Kitty, yeah. so the tits, I agree. So, alrighty, we are moving on with the rest of the show. So, question of the show before I forget, what did you guys think of Captain Marvel? So, I'll go ahead and put the polls out there so you guys can, can vote on those. So, um, as far as like, where does it rank on the last thing we'll talk about Captain Marvel, where does it rank on in the MCU? And I, I'm not going to expect you to know every movie. So, top third, middle, or bottom third? I would say lower top third. I'd say on that, yeah. There's what twenty one movies now, so that's seven, seven, seven. Can you find seven movies better than this? Lower one? top yeah. third or higher? I would go more with that tier. lower top, lower second tier. Higher like, second tier? Yeah, the, okay. the like the very top of the second tier, because probably in there. So uh, so. Ten to twelve. Ten to twelve. So yeah, about yeah, about you know higher than middle range, better than average. Yeah. So okay, I agree. Next week. Oh, we're moving on. We're we're closing out the show. Remember last year we did sixty four best heroes. Yep. Our, our bracket and March Madness is around. I'm thinking next week we do a full on organization of the bracket. Okay. Cool. For sixty four best comic book movies of all time. Okay. I've already got sixty four movies, but we can we can ditch the news and we can just get down to it and talk about which sixty four comic book movies should be in this bracket. And then we can kind of do the first round there and then kind of move on. I like it. Okay? We'll Sounds, do that next week. Good, yeah. And then we'll get into Barker's Hot Takes too next week. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's He's, not that great. I, CJ is hyping this no, up it's way not, too No, it's not no. great at all. It's it is totally dumb as shit. Okay. It's, it, it's the ramblings of a crazy person. All right. So the orders, the orders recommendations, what have you guys been reading, watching that you guys want to kind of let our audience know? <laughs> Uh, I don't really nothing new to be okay. honest. Sword Art Online is getting good okay. though, so yeah. watch that. Uh, I'm not um, gonna throw a little sports into this. I mean, just Big Twelve tournament coming okay. up, so I'm kind of stoked because I mean, K State just got a share of the uh, Big Twelve. And honestly, Shoot would won the whole thing because of tiebreakers, but we're not gonna get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we uh, and you know, K KU didn't get their uh, fallback money from Adidas to. Uh, Basically, oh, yeah, shit, all, all we got is that great fucking 14-year record. Yeah. Shit. So, I think the tournament's going to be great this year. I think there's at least five teams that could win it. And KU ultimately has to deal with Texas Tech, not KU, or K-State on that bracket. I know. So, that's pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah so. we, we got a pretty easy side of the bracket. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should say, well, teams that they can beat, for sure. And, and they can beat KU, but I'd rather deal with Baylor or Iowa State or whoever than deal with KU. Yeah, actually, yeah. So. I'll just take my perennial blue blood and be over here. Yeah, with, happy. with your yeah, with dirty your, Adidas, uh, dirty money, dirty yeah. Adidas money, which Bill Self is. I like yeah. Adidas and so. Yeah. All right, um, so if you guys have any suggestions or comments, let us know on Twitter or Facebook. We're uh, at Nerdworld Order One on both Facebook and on Twitter. You can find us personally on Facebook. 
uh, by our names, and you can find me and CJ on Twitter. At CJMFA. At Saint underscore Abel 45. And don't have a Twitter. Okay. You can find the podcast on Spotify, Google Play, uh, Lips and iTunes, Stitcher, anything that, that has an I, that has uh, iTunes, or excuse me, podcast, you're going to be able to find us on there. Uh, buy our merch, buy our shirts, buy our shit on tpublic.com. The link is directed in our show notes. We're on YouTube now. If you prefer to put that on your desk while you're working, whatever, uh, we, we're on YouTube. Check it out. My, I now have to go back and um, and add old episodes, but we, we've officially been on youtube since the uh matrix episode i think so if you want to check that out go ahead and do that i'm going to start an instagram page and i'm going to give the password to all of us if we want to put memes or what i really want to do is remember we talked about what, uh putting like audience reactions on the podcast i want to do that on instagram that'd be cool and do that so we can and we can do that so we uh have some content on instagram if you want to donate on patreon uh go ahead and do that any donation at all will help at ten dollars a month you guys will get a shirt uh, so we'll do that. And the free content, the show that's, or well, shit. That's entertaining you, you motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, and then if you want to do a one-time donation, do it at nerdworldorder2 at gmail.com. Well, I was saying about some, some bonus content that, uh, mm-hmm. is soon to be coming. Yeah, absolutely. So whenever we get that organized, we'll let you guys know about that. Uh, but as always, do you guys have anything else? Yes. I have a, okay, I have a take on Infinity War. So we've, we've. This show has said before that we believe Thanos to, even if he's not, he, he might not necessarily know he's a villain. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He believes killing people instead of letting them suffering is mercy, Craig. We've had that. That's a take we've had on the show. Yeah. Uh, that's horseshit. Because he knows he's a villain. He knows he's an asshole. He knows he's a piece of shit. And he's doing it because he's a murdering psychopath and he, he do it on purpose. He, this is just an ex- that's just an excuse for him to murder trillions of people, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in the in the very beginning, <laughs> buckle up, kids, because it is an entirely two hour movie <laughs> that lets us know why. All true. Also important is when he kills Heimdall. Uh, he said that was a mistake, as though he's punishing Heimdall by killing him. He knows killing is wrong, and he's doing it anyway because he's a piece of shit. Not because he's a great, merciful guy. He's a piece of shit. And, also, he should have went for the head. Because he knows he's doing it wrong. He knows he's a bad guy. He's not some mindless... Or, not necessarily mindless, but he's not some guy who's helping. No, he's a piece of shit. And he knows it. And I'm here to call him out on it. Fuck you, Thanos. Alright, guys. (laughs) And as always, thanks for listening to the NWO. Oh, no, and as always, obey the NWO. There you go.